How much have central banks lost with their gold holdings? How about $560 billion? That's how much central banks have lost since gold reached its record 1921 an ounce in September 2011. And that makes them the biggest loser of gold's massive sell-off. Now, in 2008, central banks started buying gold, reversing a three-decade-long selling spree. And the metal was already in its eighth year of a bull market. 535 tons were added to reserves just last year, and that's the most since 19. 1964, and the World Gold Council expects purchases anywhere between 450 and 550 tons this year alone. Central banks, by the way, own about 19 percent of all the gold ever mined. Betty. Uh, and also with this fall, though, Alex, I mean, do analysts expect that central banks will sell their gold holdings because of this? They've actually been buying. Well, everyone was focused on Cyprus selling its 10 tons of gold. Emerging market central banks have been snapping up the metal. Russia, Kazakhstan, both bought about six tons uh, back in March. Now, central banks also typically hold assets longer than the average investor, and it's seen as a currency of last resorts, if you will. The Bank of Korea said in a statement April 16th that price swings are an unavoidable risk. And there isn't a concern because gold is a long-term strategy for diversifying reserves. Now, central banks have been instrumental in providing a floor for gold on sell-offs, but are still not a driving price factor. That title goes to investors. The largest gold ETF is, in essence, the sixth largest central bank in terms of holdings. And sellings there could have a much bigger impact on prices and could even cancel out or dwarf any buying from central banks. And that's according to Sakjan Betty.